Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, First Church for Religious Science, New York City. Nice to see you all. Uh, welcome to Zoom. Um, they'll be putting up the screen in a second. I can't see your faces yet. Um, so this is our Thursday evening uh, class, what we call our self-healing class. And it's based upon two people, really. It's based upon Ernest Holmes, and it's also based upon Louise Hay. Louise Hay was the author of the book, You Can Heal Your Life. And if you're new to the class, you might say, well, who was she and what was her book? Or Most of you, I think, had found this class because of Louise Hay. Uh, Louise was a student here at the center, or what was called church, first church, uh, many years ago, and she got her education here under the days of Raymond Charles Barker, who was a popular author of books like The Power of Decision. And so Louise took classes similar to what we teach here uh, <laughs> several times a week. And if you're interested in uh, what we do, you can go to our website and uh, you can find out the kinds of classes we have taught and we will be teaching. Uh, so the book, You Can Heal Your Life, was Louise Hayes um, working with these principles that are taught uh, and were taught in the Science of Mind textbook. And that's another book. This is a very old edition of it, but uh, this is a book by Ernest Holmes. And if somebody's, uh, I'll say, a, uh, if, if they're really wanting to learn more about how this, this teaching works, this metaphysical approach to life, you might pick a, up a copy of the textbook and I would get the edition that um, uh, has the foreword written by Gene Houston because that particular book um, you can also get a uh, concordance with it. If you decide you want to study this material a little bit more. Uh, most people coming into the class every week are really looking for a reminder. And we all need reminders because what we have here is we have a practice. Uh, in fact, what we call people who were in this teaching for a while, uh, we call them practitioners because they, they have a commitment to do the work, to, to practice. And then you'll probably say, well, what does he mean by practice? Uh, a person who is working <clears throat> and coming from a place of connection understands that there's one life, there's one energy, uh, Deepak Chopra would say there's a, one unitary field. And so what he's saying is everyone is connected all the time to something. And we used to call that something God. Some people call it source. You can call it many things. <laughs> all over the world there are people who daily turn to something. And there's many, many names for what they turn to. And, you know, people have fought wars over what name and what version. But it, in this teaching, we've really evolved to the point where we understand that there is one energy, one love, one intelligence. And we learn how to use it because we, we observe how it operates. And in the book, You Can Heal Your Life, Louise Hay, uh, she really points out uh, to us that... Um, she would say we're each 100% responsible for our lives. And I always have to go and then explain. She's never saying that anybody's to blame for their life. What she's saying is your life reflects you. It reflects your consciousness. Some of you, many of you have listened to, read the book, The Secret. I remember it as a movie. I showed it in various spiritual congregations. Uh, in other cities, and it always drew a large crowd because people, you know, they, they think they understand the law of attraction. You know, you visualize something, and if you stay with the visualization, uh, there's a tendency to demonstrate that which you have in mind, which you have in consciousness. Uh, so the law of attraction and the book The Secret were very helpful to bring a lot of people into the teaching, but they really don't go the whole distance because 
it's more than just having an affirmation. It's, I can affirm that I'm whole and I'm complete. I can affirm that I'm prosperous. And so can you. You can affirm that you're healthy. You can affirm that you're healthy, wealthy, and wise. You can affirm many, many wonderful things. So why don't they show up in your life then would be the next thing. Uh, if this law of attraction really works. And what we would say to you is, they will show up in your life. <laughs> uh, you have the power. There's power for good in the universe, greater than you, that you can definitely use. So you have the power to bring forth healing of your body, uh, healing of your affairs. You have, the you have the ability within you to do great things. So what does it take? Well, it takes more than just affirming. It, it requires that we bring that affirmation, that positive statement to a point of belief. Uh, because really what gets reflected in your life isn't what you talk about so much. Uh, it's more about what you ultimately deeply believe. And when we come into this teaching, we learn about affirmative prayer, we learn about affirmations, and that's a great beginning point. But I could say that I affirm that I'm wonderful, I'm whole and complete, but maybe I don't really believe it. I could affirm that I'm healthy and that my body is radiating health, and that could be my affirmation for the week. But then there's something within me that doesn't really quite believe that. There's something in in me maybe that believes that there's a disease because the doctor has told me I have this, that, or the other thing. So a lot of people get, um, uh, they, they, they think, well, this teaching isn't working because I'm not demonstrating this perfect health that I'm talking about. I'm not demonstrating the relationship that I want just yet. And you know, all I can say is, you've heard it said before, it sounds kind of silly, but don't leave before the miracle happens. So the thing is, we keep working with it. Uh, it was best illustrated to me years ago when someone drew a diagram, it was probably me, one of a, an iceberg, and the top part of the iceberg is above water, and that represents our conscious mind. It's the thoughts that we're thinking. And most of us are learn, have learned how to be positive thinkers. At least we, we, we do our best. And <clears throat> so all thought is creative. So here I am, you know, on top of that uh, iceberg, which some representation is above water, you know, 2%, 10%, whatever it is. And I'm thinking positively. And, you know, I would like to have those affirmations and demonstrate my life. I would like those affirmations, those positive thoughts show up. Uh, but what works against us is all the years that we have been nurturing the negative things. And that can go right back when I was a little boy hearing that I wasn't good enough because, or I was like my brother, or I was like my father, or, or whatever ne negative comparisons I might have picked up by anybody during those younger years, and that I reinforced. See, when you want to move forward in consciousness, you've got to clean things up. So you start with the positive statements. I love, accept, and approve of myself would be one. Uh, there's thousands. I love, accept, and approve of myself exactly as I am, would Louise, Louise Hay would say. But that has to go down beyond a, the verbal statement into your being. And if there's something within you that say, no, 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 you're really, <laughs> you don't love yourself, uh, or you're a mess, or if anybody really knew me, you know, they wouldn't, you know, because it's, we begin where we are, Louise would say, it's like cleaning a house, okay? You know, you, you're walking around your life and everything's lovely, but you walk in your home and it's a mess, right? And well, you can also in consciousness be, talking a pretty good game, you know, you tell everybody things are wonderful in your relationship and in your life, when in fact, you're having some troubles. And this deep within you, <laughs> uh, there's unrest and there's discomfort and there's hurt 
and there's pain, and all these things uh, somehow have to get um, uh, corrected or say dealt with. Uh, there was an author I was fond of years ago, I think her name was Jacqueline Small, and she said, all your battered places need to come to light. And all she was saying is we have within us Think of the iceberg again, and this part of us, this huge part of us that's the repository of all of our beliefs since the time we're children. That stuff needs to be dealt with. Um, so when we're thinking new thoughts and positive thoughts, and they're going into this deeper aspect of mind, as we've taught in other cl classes, it's that part of us that's just remembers everything and stores everything. When we make a statement that's positive, you know, you're going to make it, you, you do so with some passion. It's really good to notice when you're doing your affirmations or your affirmative prayers, what if anything comes up? Because I could affirm that I'm healthy and I'm wonderful and I'm loving and I'm lovable. And that's the ultimate truth for all of us, by the way. But if something comes up after I say that, this is, oh, no, you're not. You're a bit of a fraud. Oh, no, you're not. You're kind of like, you're not. You're just, you know, it's... So when that happens, you have really, what we used to say, you've struck gold because if you want to move forward, that stuff, those areas where you don't even believe yourself to be a good person or you believe that you're failing in some way or you're being overly critical somehow of yourself, that's the conversation that needs to change, okay? Um, you've heard us say before, your life is reflected from inside out. Um, your life is mirrored, is another way we say it. Um, so, I mean, we can dress up, we can sound nice, but really, if you want to move forward and you want your life to kind of like reflect a different kind of consciousness, then that's the work we do. And where do you start again? You start where you are. You start with the conversation you're having. And I'm not talking about the audio one that everybody can hear. I'm talking about the conversation that you're having with yourself, the one that um, lifts you up and the one that sometimes tortures you. Okay, so I know a lot of people have a lot of worry and fear. And um, you come into a teaching like this and we begin to work with it. The, what we talk about most Thursday nights is the internal dialogue that we have. Uh, that's what goes on in your head when you're alone, you're watching TV, or you get up in the morning, or you're by yourself. There's always a dialogue that's going on. And it, it probably would be very useful if we became more mindful of what that dialogue is. Because you can do something with that dialogue. If you can catch yourself in negative moments where you're doing a spin, uh, in a negative way about someone else or about yourself. You know, those are great moments and you can say, stop. <laughs> you can tell yourself in any way you choose to do it, you interrupt those negative conversations that you're having about yourself or someone else and you can turn it around. There's been songs in New Thought Circles, can't remember who they were at this point. You're always free to turn it around. No, it, it could be really bad all week long and you're free to turn it around. It could have been bad all morning and, it, you know, it, and you could have been scrapping and fighting and you're in these painful situations. And the thing is, you're free to turn all that around. The universe, thankfully, responds to us. <laughs> um, it really does. So the old way would be to pray to some God above Typically, it would be a male, and it would, would be with all kinds of power. And we were taught when we were kids, maybe some of you have been spared all this now, you know, that you approach this God in fear and trembling, and, and, <laughs> and vengeance was his, and all that stuff. Um, we're in a new day. These are the 2020s. No, most people don't believe that stuff anymore. But the thing is, most people don't realize that they have power to heal. Most people don't realize that they can heal their life. Louise Hay was an incredible human being because she took 
some of this, these best new thought principles, philosophical principles that all these great authors had and she made them so very accessible to people everywhere. Thus her book circled the globe in 28 languages and you know, helped 100 million people. And that's why it's still relevant today because nobody can do this for, you can't get a person to do this for you, right? <laughs> you can't hire a person to do this for you. You can call people like me, you know, therapists and ministers, and what we can do is we can listen, which we do, and we can suggest and we can guide a little bit, but ultimately we have our own work to do. I have my own spiritual work to do, we all do. Um, if we're in this field, if you're a practitioner or you're a friend or you're a prayer partner, um, you can't do that work for somebody else, but you can, if they're open, you can suggest, make suggestions, you know, because really ultimately we never foster dependency at this center, <laughs> first church, first center, because we can't fix you, we can't heal you, we cannot do anything for you. It's all, always going to, the work you're always going to be doing is work that you're going to be doing with the most important person in the world, but it's the work you're going to be doing is the work you're doing with yourself. And it pays to monitor your conversation. If you're miserable and you're spinning misery and you're caught up in some state of consciousness where you feel like poor me, uh, you know, ain't it awful and you don't know how bad it's been or, see that's self-pity or some version of a, being a victim. And you know, it's your right. You can do it that way if you want to. Uh, the thing is, ultimately, it's, uh, after you feel your feelings and you express your feelings, which is certainly valid, everyone needs to, uh, to some extent, but then if you want to move forward, you know, then we have a new thought. And um, from the Course in Miracles, which I love also, you know, there's a saying, I am not a victim of the world I see. And that was revelatory, revelatory to me years ago. No matter how you find you yourself, no matter what happened to your relationship or your job or when the world seems to be ganging up on you, <laughs> uh, with this whole confluence of things going on, you know, you can stand in the light and you can center yourself in the truth and you can know that I am not a victim of, of anything, all right? Now, you may bring things to you that are ultimately healing. They might be painful sometimes as they come to you. But there's no God that's out to get you, you know. There's nobody out to get you. Um, there's an unfolding that's going on in us and through us and all around us. And if you're living your life more and more as a spiritually realized person, or even if you're approaching that, you know, where you're becoming more and more uh, in tune with what we'll call being about your father's business, which is essentially just saying, look, I'm not really a, I'm not really dwelling in these lower places of consciousness. I'm here to lift myself up, and I'm here to attempt to lift other people up. You know, then you start to realize, that as you're healing your life, that every encounter is a holy encounter, and that people are doing the best they can with what they got. And you cease being a fault finder and more and more you're focused on seeing what's good with you and what's good in your life and your preoccupation would be to see and acknowledge that good and that God in others. See, that's a different kind of consciousness than what you see in your day, most people see in their day-to-day -day living. Well, how do you get there? Well, first of all, you gotta want to. <laughs> you gotta wanna step out of the world of reaction to everything uh, you need to step out of the world of being right about everything and step away from using that pointing finger, you know, you know it's because as we're fault, f finding fault with other people, most likely, in, <laughs> as been taught to me years ago, you wouldn't be able so readily to see all these things if, they, if these kind of judgments and these things didn't exist somewhere within ourselves. Um, we live in this teaching, in a metaphysical teaching, which, where we know all is well, and that everything is unfolding in perfect action, and 
that we live in a loving and benevolent universe. And that's the practice. Now, it's really easy to get to descend into this whole other way of thinking. Uh, <laughs> I've taught this class different ways. It used to be um, philosophy. It was Pascal, Pascal's Wager, which I know you hear me talk about from time to time. He was a mathematician and philosopher. I forget which century he was, but his whole notion was keep living your life, seeing the beauty, seeing the good. Let that be your truth. <laughs> Because if you're living your life coming from that place, uh, you know, life will respond to you coming from that place. And you're the beneficiary of seeing life as whole and complete and good. Your, your life will be blessed because this is, you're a, you're a creative being, so you're creating your life this way. Other people don't have to agree with you, you know, but this is how you choose to live your life. It's a basic Christian pr principle, as you all know, to forgive other people and love them um, and forgive them uh, endlessly and always, 70 times seven. So we practice the spiritual approach here, the positive approach that Louise Hay taught. We realize that all healing is self-healing and we understand that there is a law of cause and effect and life will reflect whatever that conversation is that you're having with the most important person in the world. So let your conversations be high. <laughs> um, I didn't say get high. I said let your conversations be high, be on high. Let them be generous and let them be forgiving. And um, understand, you know, everybody is evolving and everyone is growing and uh, Everybody makes mistakes while they're learning, and that's very natural. Um, Bill Tolliver used to say often that, you know, we're in the equivalent of a schoolhouse uh, in life. And you come in, you know, like this wonderful being, you're an individualization of God life, and you're coming here uh, with just so much to learn and so much to express. and. We've learned some things along the way that have worked against us when we we're younger. Perhaps they were done, said and taught to us to protect us, but most of us now are adults and some of us are very stuck and um, we don't have to stay stuck. In fact, the universe is conspiring for us for, to express ourselves in greater, uh, in greater freedom. Uh, so all the things that are coming um, our way are coming there for us to be able to step up and step out so there is greater freedom for us. Uh, so that's a little bit about the law, that's a little bit about Louise Hay. Uh, I could talk about her for hours, but I always wanna hear about, wanna hear what's coming up for you. What does that mean? As a therapist, <laughs> uh, it used to, the question would be, well, what's coming up for you this week. Um, and that really would be, okay, even in this, cl in this class, maybe I'm reacting to something. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, maybe I, the, this class has been good for me tonight because I'm being reminded that I'm an inlet and outlet of God consciousness. And maybe this class is reminding me that nothing's holding me back. Or what m might be coming up is I don't feel good enough and you're preoccupied with this. So when I ask the question, what, what's it been like being you this week? There's no right or wrong answer. It's always like, okay, well, I've been connected this week. I'm doing pretty well. I've been paying attention. <laughs> when I go negative, I correct myself. When I find myself uh, uh, being bitter, I, I stop myself. When I find myself being critical, I stop myself. When I find myself um, I'm beginning to pay attention to that inner dialogue. Um, all healing, Louise Hay said, is self-healing. So what she's really talking about always is doing our work in what we used to call mind, or we still call mind, doing our work in consciousness. So she's, she's suggesting, we're suggesting, Raymond Charles suggested, all of them have suggested, you know, this isn't about going out and transforming the world. This is really about, you know, working with yourself. 
Uh, Louise would have said, has said, when you really love yourself and you're at peace with yourself, uh, you're going to become at peace with other people. When you really love yourself, everything in your life begins to work. Things start to outpicture in greater, greater harmony, and you're willing to let go more and more. Um, so, I'll read a couple points of her philosophy, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, I already spoke about the first two. Uh, the next one I, we speak of from time to time, the point of power is always in the present moment. And that reminds me also of Ernest Holmes who said this, he said principle is not bound by precedent. And what he was talking about is this life principle, this thing some of us call God, this power. It's not bound by anything that's happened before. Principle's not bound by anything. <laughs> it's always alive in the moment. So in this moment, you can have a new moment where you can let it all go and you can see yourself as, as completely supported and you can see yourself as a great success. You know, healing doesn't have to take forever or eons either. You know, some people believe you have to struggle. There was an interesting book written years ago by Stuart Wilde, which was entitled, Life Was Never Meant to Be a Struggle. But you know, there's a lot of struggle going on, struggling going on there. So apparently a lot of people still have a belief that life has to be hard and difficult. And so you have all the power in the world supporting you <laughs> in your consciousness. Uh, so be here now, be here now. Okay, that's Ram Dass's message. You know, the point of power is always in the present moment. If you can center yourself and learn to um, take some time, time out. So I used to do it every half an hour on the hour, different times in my life, or a couple times a day. Some of you in 12-step programs do a morning prayer, uh, an evening uh, inventory. Uh, many of you meditate. But whatever you can do, and how, you know, whatever little bit of effort you're going to put in is going to pay big dividends where you can know that the point of power is here and it's responding to you. And if something comes up for you that says I'm not good enough or there's something wrong or missing with me, you can look at it, you can feel it, and you can find a way to neutralize that thought. Or you, if you can't, you can talk to a prayer partner, you can get a hold of a practitioner, but really what you want to do, I would suggest, is find a way to deal with it um, Bill T. used to say, we're in the business of trading in the lesser ideas that we're harboring for the greater. So how can it help me to keep on hanging on to an old idea about myself where I feel that I'm unhealthy? <coughs> or all I'm talking about is my illness or my disease or what I don't have. We have the power to turn those conversations around in a different direction. So it's the... T I'll go right into the definition of spiritual mind treatment next, which is found in our textbook, uh, the Science of Mind textbook. In the glossary, Ernest Holmes will say, there's two definitions actually, he'll say it's the time, the art, the method of ridding this type of thought from our consciousness so that we can experience uh, the goodness and the God that's really always here. Um, you've heard in other books, scriptures, that the kingdom is here, it's at hand. It always has been, it always will be. So when we're not ex experiencing the joy and the expansion and the good and all the stuff that's really present, it's because we're locked in to some type of old idea. So we want to learn to be here now, we want to learn to let go of anything uh, that's holding us back. Uh, we understand that all of life is um, is moving, it's, all of life is really trying to get your attention. Uh, I've said in many classes that spirit is wooing you. There's something within you that wants you to express uh, more dynamically and always in terms of greater freedom. So that also speaks to the idea of resistance. You know, if you, if you resist change, <laughs> and you resist letting go, then it's, you'll find yourself in an uncomfortable position. So 
uh, we want to, um, in our meditations, in our moments of reflection, we want to welcome change, and then we want to start making powerful um, affirmative statements knowing that all of them are true. <laughs> and when you're really loving yourself and you're making positive statements, they're true statements. And once again, if something comes up for you that contradicts the truth, truth, state, truth statement, that would be an ind indication right there that you have struck gold and that's an area where you could begin to focus. Uh, so you, you bring, we, that's the work we do. We take the time, the effort, the time and effort, the, the art, the time, the effort of re ridding those thoughts until we can realize that we are one with the one. Uh, if this seems hard for you, I would invite you to call the center, make an appointment, uh, or work with a prayer, par a prayer partner or a um, practitioner. Uh, another good method always is journaling. Um, but you can move through anything. The universe totally has your back. Whatever is coming up in your life is happening uh, for your greater good, ultimately. <laughs>